hated, mocked, tossed aside, reviled. Tog Heuer watches have been through it all. The once prestigious watch brand barely means anything to many watch enthusiasts around the world today. What went wrong? Well, for starters, a lot of things went wrong. As it turns out, bad decisions, bad labels, and bad representations can hurt anyone. Today, we want to talk a little about Tog Heuer, hmm? Valid arguments have been raised over the years to justify all the hate Tog Heuer has been receiving. So today, we want to shine the light on them a little bit. What exactly is the problem with Tog Heuer? Let's start by learning a bit about how Tog originated. In 1860, a pretty long time ago, Edward Heuer started making watches in La Chaux de Fonds, Switzerland. This was a long time before Tog, short for Techniques de Avant Garde, but majority stake in the company, which was then bought up by the LVMH Group. Soon after, he started getting patents for new mechanisms, some of which are still used in mechanical wristwatches today. But Hoyer was best known for making chronographs, which he began by making dashboard clocks for cars and planes. Then, in 1914, Hoyer made their first watch that could be worn on the wrist. By the 1960s, Hoyer watches were so closely linked to auto racing that it's hard to find a picture of Formula One, Indy, or GT racing from that time without their logo in it. In particular, all drivers had to have a Hoyer Octavia or Carrera chronograph. When Steve McQueen wore a square Hoyer Monaco watch during his all-too-short racing career, both he and the watch were captured in photos that have become classic examples of how men should dress. Le Mans, a movie made by Steve McQueen in 1971, gave Hoyer's racing history a touch of Hollywood's mysterious aura. Hoyer, like a lot of other Swiss watchmakers, had trouble during the 1970s quartz crisis. Things got so bad that the company was put up for sale. When the brand was bought by the holding company Techniques de Avant-Garde in 1985, Tog was added to the name. During the Reagan years, Tog Heuer, which sponsored sailing, golf, tennis, and of course auto racing, became as much of a status symbol as a Rolex among wealthy preppies who didn't mind showing off their money. Men and women put on sporty two-tone Tog Heuer watches, popped the collars of their Lacoste shirts, tied cable-knit sweaters around their necks, and lit up Marlboro lights in their wild Porsche 911s. But it is 2022. The 70s are gone, and the prestigious brand Tog Heuer is now one of the most hated brands. Why? First, let's start with the pricing. Many, and we mean many, believe that Tog Heuer is too expensive for its actual worth. Compared to other premium watch manufacturers, it is simply overpriced for what you get. Still, there are a lot of emotions involved here. Just like any other business, watch companies naturally aim to earn a profit from their operations. Are Tog Heuer timepieces truly as expensive as they seem? Do you think they are overpriced? There are a lot of people who would answer yes. Still, the value of an item can be viewed in many different ways, so we can't take a stand on this one. The second thing we know for sure is wrong with Tog Heuer is their marketing. Goodness, sometimes it feels like their marketing is all over the place. This is one reason why watch collectors can't seem to stand them. It's almost as though they don't know who their customers are. But you see, marketing is about showing your strengths to the target audience. Branding is more important today than it has ever been. Tog Heuer gives a lot of money to sports teams. If they stick to this, it will help their brand and their main message. But what we've seen them do over the years is team up with a lot of different celebrities in different ways. Famous actors, models, and others. This hurts their main brand with athletes and sports fans. Many people in the watch community made fun of the Cara Delevingne campaign. We don't mean to be mean to Cara, but many were wondering, what was Tog thinking? Believe us, this is the worst kind of marketing there is. For a watch brand that is all about sports and makes watches that are all about sports, why would they hire a supermodel to promote their watch after hiring a tennis champion? You see, it doesn't add up. Apparently, Tog Heuer has been making some bad decisions over the years, and perhaps the biggest of them all is the lie they told us in 2009. Here's what happened. In 2009, Tog Heuer released the Caliber 1887. Tog sold it as a movement made in-house. But it was later discovered that the movement wasn't made by Tog alone and that it wasn't even made in Switzerland. It was instead made by Seiko. Sure, it was a Seiko movement that had a lot of changes to it, but it was still a Seiko TC78 movement. 
So the big deal in all of this was that Tog Heuer told the world that the movement was made in their factory. President Bobbin said that Tog Heuer made so many changes that he believed it was a whole new movement. However, the 1887 chronograph movement was still similar enough to the SII chronograph in its basic design that it got people talking on the internet. And we all know that the internet does not do well with lies. In President Bobbin's words, rather than getting around the patent, as other companies might have done, we contacted SII. Said you have a great patent, which hasn't been used very much, so we acquired the intellectual property and elaborated on it. We had the broad freedom to develop our own caliber. Caliber 1887 is our own caliber, based on that intellectual property. We have industrialized, which is the toughest part, being capable of producing the high quality standard at a reasonable cost, which is a really tough challenge. We redesigned the movement following the patent, leading to a movement with different dimensions. Bobbin continues, the plate is bigger, 29.3 millimeters, and we have reduced the thickness, and we may add some modules for complications in the future. Maybe one day we'll want to add a power reserve, a retrograde, and so on. But here's the thing. Some people believe that appearance is everything. And if we're honest, it does matter a great deal. While Bobbin claimed he did not like the fact that Tog was trying to trick people, it just wasn't enough. Alas, the problem was not that they made changes to the Seiko movement. Perhaps people wouldn't have cared much that they did. The problem, the big controversy here, is that they claimed it was made in-house. Honestly, that is just a lie, and you can only imagine how angry watch geeks were when it was confirmed that it was a Seiko movement after all. The modifications they made were good, really, but they should have just told the truth from the start. What a PR nightmare all of this made. The internet hasn't forgotten, and the watch community hasn't forgotten either. One last reason why many watch enthusiasts dislike Tog Heuer, and why people will claim there are a million things wrong with Tog Heuer, is because of the simple fact that humans enjoy taking offense. As with any group, there is an inherent bias towards conformity in the watch community. There are some companies that everyone enjoys criticizing. It's common knowledge among watch enthusiasts that Hublot is another timepiece manufacturer universally reviled. Still, Keep in mind that it's acceptable to have an opinion. Ultimately though, avoid being a bully. Nobody likes a jerk. If Tog Heuer is to join the ranks of the cherished brands of watch collectors, it must earn the respect of the industry. Numerous adjustments would have to be made. A lot of people believe Tog Heuer should revisit the brand's Swiss beginnings, to return to a time before 1985, or more specifically, to a time before Tog was included. The Monaco series is among Tong Heuer's finest offerings, Tog Heuer's Monaco line of timepieces has become a legendary. The first version of this chronograph with a square casing appeared in 1969. You can still count on this watch being among the best of its kind from Tog Heuer. The Monaco watch is a symbol of who Heuer was and what Tog Heuer may become. If only it could get its marketing and its identity straightened out and focus on one certain demographic. But one good thing is that Tog Heuer's new connected line of Swiss-made smartwatches is winning praise for its innovative design. Tog Heuer sees an opportunity in the smartwatch market and has positioned itself as an improved alternative to Apple Watch. The company plans to keep its word by providing consistent software updates for all currently available smartwatches. Tog may use this data to make upgrades to their already available smartwatches, ensuring that their existing consumers continue to be satisfied. Frederick Arnall, the company's CEO, made such a claim in a recent interview with GQ. Thus, Tog Heuer's future is not doom and gloom, and perhaps they might make a comeback by emphasizing both their history and their status with Heuer. Then there's the fact that they're constantly pushing the envelope with their cutting-edge connected smartwatches, which have quickly become one of the most popular Swiss-made smartwatches on the market. And who knows? You know, maybe one day a Tog Heuer will be one of your favorite watches.